Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Now that we are actually witnessing the big Bitcoin decline that we have been anticipating, I don't believe anyone is surprised. Hear me out, we went up to over $49,000. Over the subsequent months, we have dropped below $40,000. The most important thing to understand here, isn't it? That is exactly what I had been arguing for the entire time as the ETF drama reached unprecedented levels on social media. I mentioned that piling steady currency is the main goal. To top it all off, you can see why many believe this drop is far from over. And that it will fall, and it may fall even more in the next 24 hours. Although it's noticeable on a number of different coins, there are a few older ones that retain a tiny green hue. They are devastated. One thing you should know is that XRP XRP truly did not experience a huge sell-off. Same as the majority of coins. Looking back to the 19th, we were sitting at around 53 cents, we're sitting at about 53 cents now. It's crazy to think about, but it's still possible that XRP will have a massive sell-off. We should be cautious and aware of this. On the other hand, Bitcoin's dominance is still around 50%, so it's possible that Bitcoin could have a major pullback, maybe even below $40,000, down to the mid to low $30,000 range. As I mentioned in a recent video, we're actually looking at this post in the stay XPT posted. It seems like everyone's current thinking about Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin is down 20% since the golden rejection, and history shows that the decline is far from over. Looking at the big picture from 2016, 2019, and even 2024, we can see the 618 rejection and the percentages of 29.25%, 30.4%, and 20%. At the moment, we're at about 20%. If Bitcoin drops 30%, we'd be at about $35,000. As I mentioned before, the low to mid region on 30,000 is the key level to watch. If we see that, then all coins will suffer even more, and there will be a pretty large sell-off. So, we need to focus on that level, but we also need to be aware of where the majority of the sell pressure is coming from. Because it's Grayscale, for instance, Grayscale has been selling off a lot of Bitcoin, consider this from a different angle. Looks like Whale Wire is planning to dump even more Bitcoin, Justin Grayscale sent over $900 million worth to the Coinbase exchange, so be careful everyone. I've already mentioned Whale Wire before, it's a very bearish account overall. Looking at the sale pressure and the pressure on Bitcoin ETFs XRP declines, we have 6 days of trading 95,000 to Bitcoin, and BlackRock and Fidelity are now tied for first place. For how much longer will Grayscale Bitcoin see selling pressure? So far, other Bitcoin ETF issuers, notably BlackRock, have absorbed the sell-offs. Here we can see that Bitcoin ETFs hold nearly $4 billion in assets. On the one hand, we can see all the positive Bitcoin ETF flows. On the other hand, at the bottom, we can see Grayscale at negative 2806, which is pretty significant in terms of a major sell-off. It's interesting that they're still marketing their spot Bitcoin ETF. A lot of people think this is an attempt to manipulate the market and create havoc. The point is, it is irrelevant. Listen, in the end, we were aware that the Bitcoin ETF would be sold off anyhow, and the smart money was also aware that the story around the Bitcoin ETF was all a hoax, so it wasn't going to cause Bitcoin's price to soar to $100,000 or something. However, in the near run, I do believe this is a correction en route to record highs. Therefore, I am not worried about it at the moment. I remain concentrated on the final objective, which is, naturally, that we are currently in the midst of the next cycle. In addition, there are a few factors that will determine when XRP prices decline. The most significant. In the first three months of 2024, the Grayscale coin sales drivers dropped from 621,000 Bitcoin to little under 580,000. Bitcoin since the ETF launch, Andra, and 38,000 BTC could all be released in 2024, with 38,000 BTC possibly released before the third quarter of Celsius. FTX is also insolvent, with around 20,500 BTC, 
and a small amount of 32,000 BTC that miners have been hoarding for the next halving is expected to be sold during 2024. Not to mention the 194,000 Bitcoin confiscated by the US government from criminals. Never mind if there's going to be a huge sell-off this year, or even in the first, second, or third quarters. However, we must continue to pay attention to these details. A word of caution to everyone, always keep 10% to 15% of your holdings in stable coinage in a reserve. Although the market has been quite optimistic for some time, many users still hold 10 to 15% of their coins in stable coin holdings. Yeah. In full. No one should belittle you since your coin exposure is stable, listen. This is really vital. The dip is no longer being purchased by anyone. You end up bankrupt doing that. You should save steady coins in a secondary account so that you may purchase the drop when important levels are reached. A lot of individuals merely buy negative candles instead of averaging in. Oh, there was a 5% decrease, I need to restock. That's absurd. Investing in something that is steadily declining isn't as smart as investing in something with support. In light of this, I was wondering whether you thought it would be a good idea for everyone to set aside 10 to 15% of their crypto holdings to be used for big buy opportunities. Like any other Oakwin in this market, I consider that as accumulating. I, along with the US Government Accountability Office, think stablecoin accumulation is really important. Concurrent with the grayscale sell-off, they have been extremely pessimistic. The date here is January 16th. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets can circumvent US economic sanctions, which are in place to discourage foreign organizations from acting in a way that harms US interests. The last time I looked, physically moving US cash throughout the globe was no problem at all. Monetary value, sanctions do not completely prevent it. Even while sanctions are in place, fiat cash may still be freely used and transferred. However, I bring this up because Elizabeth Warren cited this very thing on the 21st. As for the recent USGAO study, it verifies that sanction-evading rogue regimes are utilizing cryptocurrency to compromise our national security. Crypto should finally comply with anti-money laundering regulations. To make that happen, I have a bill. Oh no. You have a bill to outright outlaw cryptocurrency, Elizabeth Warren. Yes, I understand. Their goal is to dissuade you from owning and trading cryptocurrency. This is, nevertheless, the situation in the United States. The United States of America does not dictate global events, as I have often stated. But it's hilarious that these people keep talking trash while getting shut down by others in the industry. For instance, in the crypto space, people are asking when these hypocrites will make their banker friends Jamie Dimon and JP Morgan pay up. Meanwhile, a judge has approved a $290 million settlement between JP Morgan and the victims of the Epstein explosion. And get this, at the tail end of 2021, JP Morgan was fined $200 million for allowing its workers to use WhatsApp as a means of evading authorities. But get this, guess what? The amusing thing about Zero Hedge is that he just stops talking about the billions of dollars that have been laundered using Bitcoin and US dollars since 2017. Compare this 20,000 to the 33. Therefore, when we examine this situation closely, correct? They are crafting a story because they are aware that we are on the cusp of a fantastic chance to purchase more altcoins at a discount before the next major surge. The irony, though, is that returning to this piece, I was thinking about Crypto One Tony Edward. A recent $18 million punishment was levied on JP Morgan. January 21st has passed. We're coercing clients into keeping quiet about bank. Bank's evil conduct. You have no right to insert clauses that forbid persons from reporting wrongdoing to the SEC in any legal document, including but not limited to employment contracts and settlement agreements. Here is the quotation. Yet, for a number of years, we claimed that JP Morgan forced certain clients into the impossible choice of either accepting credits or settlements from the firm or reporting possible violations of securities law to the SEC. All right, let's take a closer look at this. $18 million. Because of their decision to withhold crucial information from the SEC, 
There is no larger bank than this one, with $18 million. Nothing in their eyes, just why am I even mentioning this? For the simple reason that we need to return to October 29, 2023. Ripple is seeking $770 million from the SEC. Can you perceive the issue at hand? Huge penalties are imposed on crypto holders. Big banks who aren't involved in cryptocurrency, guess what? Fear not, for the sum of a couple million dollars will be the worst that can happen to you. Companies in the cryptocurrency industry should have significantly less accountability than large banks. In order to establish credibility, it is essential to ensure that these bankers and large institutions are held responsible for their conduct. Spending $18 million has little impact. Libraries as well. They utterly destroyed the library. With that aside, there have also been a great many additional participants. Coinbase is here. Money, Kraken. I mean, it's maddening. Finally, here's what meta lawmen have to say. In the hearings involving Binance and Coinbase, as these are two noteworthy instances. Nance, on the other hand, consented to pay the largest fine ever, something like $4.3 billion. In the past, I think, the SEC failed to acknowledge Bill Hinman's creation of the sufficiently decentralized test while praising the advantages of the guidelines it had provided on the analysis of whether crypto tokens constitute securities. Furthermore, it was treated as though it had never occurred. However, Paul Gruel is available here. By the way, in case you were wondering, this is Coinbase's top legal officer. Not only that, but it's far worse. When directly confronted with a query concerning Mr. Hinman, they pretended the inquiry was actually asking looking at this. Well, this is just plain silly. At its heart? That makes sense to me. I see. So, that's a plus. Who, if anybody, other than Mr. Heyman, said that an employee who is no longer with your company made that claim? Tokens and loans, apologies, but they are not securities. Please explain how these assets qualify as securities. It all comes back to what I mentioned earlier, we have a fundamental ecology that determines what a party buyer gets. Consequently, there was absolutely no doubt. The question does not have a response. Nobody brings up Bill in conversation or anything like. Right now, it's hilarious, isn't it? Regarding the IEF game scenario, they are shielding folks like Bill and they do not want the tarp to fly off. It seems like we've been dwelling on this for quite some time, and we're still curious about the big picture and the truth. Since the SEC is currently on a warpath, particularly with the Coinbase issue that I mentioned before, I think it is important for everyone to keep an eye on this situation. In the end, the market's liquidity would be severely limited if the SEC prevails since they will have complete control over exchanges. And it is the lifeblood of this market, without it, it will be very difficult to predict what you may purchase and sell. However, it is crucial to note that the SEC and Gary Gensler do not have control over the outcome. Beyond the United States, this industry will only grow. Keep in mind that technology is always going to come out on top. Make sure you're cold surging your cryptocurrency and taking every step seriously. This is my biggest concern for US-based crypto consumers and holders. That is, make sure you have cold storage, VPNs, and all that stuff set up, otherwise, you might be the target, I'm telling you. I believe that many of these situations involving Coinbase Binance require our attention, and not only in that context. Not to mention all the other exchanges that the SEC is now pursuing. I can't believe this is still going on, but it's all part of the bigger image they have in mind. And powerful people like Elizabeth Warren are still using regulators and pulling strings, and bankers are still using regulators. In my perspective, a great deal of money is moving around in the background, and it is this money that is actually creating these changes. To me, it seems like there's a lot of corruption. The market is currently experiencing turbulence, which has led to a great deal of manipulation. Stay strapped in, because there's a lot of volatility, later this week and into February might bring even more unfavorable market activity. Keep in mind that crypto has a dismal track record in February, we must so maintain our recollection of the fact that we must maintain our concentration on it.
Once again, you shouldn't sell all your holdings on the spur of the moment, thinking prices would fall. Many individuals are still failing to grasp the big picture of the current market situation, even if the fear and greed index is beginning to fall sharply. Seeing it makes me happy because it confirms, once again, that we are drawing near. Having said that, I really hope this video was entertaining for you. Please consider subscribing to my alerts, following me on Twitter, and joining the free Discord server linked below if you like this free material. Furthermore, if you are interested in checking out NordVPN, you can save 63% by using the link in the description below and in the comments section. At $399 per month, it is absolutely unbeatable. One great thing is that they take cryptocurrency or a two-year plan. It costs $101. Obviously, the taxing nation decides on this. It's all over today. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.